Hi, and welcome to a new video. In this video, we will talk about how magnets and magnetism can damage your mechanical watch. Magnetism is something that most people don't think about, but they encounter it pretty much every single day. Magnetism in everyday life has become a lot more common than it was 50 years ago when mechanical watches were most widely popular. So watches do have to resist way more magnetic fields today than they did in the past and they sort of still work on the same technology and uh, this is something we don't really think about. I believe that magnetism together with water ingress and or impacts and shocks are pretty much the three most threatening real-life circumstances to mechanical watches. Fortunately magnetism or the impact of magnetism on watches can, in most cases, be solved fairly quickly. So the question is, why is magnetism a problem? We don't seem to have a problem with it in everyday life anyway, right? Well, magnetism occurs in many everyday objects. It's in your loudspeakers, it is in your AirPods, it's in your laptop, in your phone, it is in buckles. You also find it in induction coils, for example, those who you use to charge your, your devices, for example. And what it does is it acts on the metals that are used within a watch and uh, affects them to either make the watch less accurate or to render it useless completely. Well, first of all, there are two things that occur usually when your watch is magnetized. The first option is that your watch stops altogether. This is either because something broke or something got affected so much that it renders the watch unable to be working. And the second thing that we mostly see with watches who have been magnetized is the fact that they suddenly run very fast for no apparent reason. And I'm not talking about like 20 seconds, 30 seconds, or even a minute. I'm talking like 5, 10, 15, 20 minutes too fast every day. And the reason for that is that the hairspring that basically governs the accuracy of a mechanical movement gets affected. And the way this works is that the hairspring of a watch is comprised of, of that little tiny metal spiral. And the way it regulates a watch is that the effective length of that hairspring determines how precise the watch is working. The longer the effective length of the hairspring, the slower the rate of the watch is. The shorter the active length of the hairspring is, the faster the watch goes. And what magnets do is they magnetize that hairspring and these little tiny windings of the hairspring start to stick together and effectively that shortens the active length of the hairspring making it run very 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 fast. Luckily in most cases this is something that can be reversed by just demagnetizing a watch. So if you encounter a mechanical watch that is suddenly from one moment to another running very, very fast, you can pretty much be sure that it has been magnetized and you should stop wearing it and stop winding it immediately and get it demagnetized. The second way that magnetization is damaging your watch movement or the movement within your watch is the fact that it magnetizes all the steel parts within the movement. And that means that metal dust and debris within the watch gets attracted by the steel parts, which are mostly pinions and parts of the wheel train. So they start to collect metal dust and it starts to cause increased abrasion and deterioration of the mechanism. Overall, that ends in a much more expensive overhaul and service. So demagnetizing the entire watch is obviously your way to go here. So where do you find magnetism in daily life? Well, you'd be surprised. You pretty much encounter it every time you have an electromagnetic coil. And that can be found in many, many objects. For example, in speakers, large loudspeakers, headphones, it's obviously in magnets in general, for example, for hinges in your laptop or obviously the kind of permanent magnets like the good old fridge magnet. You also have electromagnetic fields in and around electric motors, so those can affect your watch also.
there is a little bit of a difference between old watches and new watches. Old watches did not have to encounter so much magnetism, and the metals within watches were also not so advanced. Old watches do get magnetized a lot more often. This is something to look out for for everyone who loves vintage watches. They are a lot more vulnerable to magnetic fields. Back in the day, those watches who had to encounter magnetic fields were often specially protected against it, usually by soft iron cages around the movement within the case. So you had a secondary case within the watch that most of the time even the dial was a part of to shield it from magnetic fields. And that improved the resistance to magnetic fields for those watches. In modern watches, we are working with a lot more advanced alloys and especially balances and balance springs, so the escapement in general have become a lot more anti-magnetic over the decades. The extreme, for example, are silicon hair springs and silicon escapements, but even modern watches are, because of the non-magnetic alloys, are relatively resistant to magnetic fields. So how does that look in real life? I've comprised a little experiment here where I have a watch, a mechanical movement on the time grapher, and I will slowly introduce a magnet to that movement. And you will see the change first hand on the time grapher. So the question is, how do you get rid of a magnetized watch? Or not that, but how get you re get rid of the magnetization within the watch? Well, there is a very simple process that is called demagnetization. Demagnetizing a watch is pretty straightforward, and pretty much every jeweler or watchmaker can do it and will do it. That should not take a lot of money and time for that matter. Usually it's a process that takes about a minute to do. You can also do it yourself. I've done a video about that with a very inexpensive tool. You can check it out in the description down below and in the top right corner of this video right now. Thank you for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Like and subscribe if you don't want to miss out on new videos in the future. And you can also follow me on Instagram for more content. You find the link for Instagram in the video description. If you have any watchmaking related questions or if you have any ideas for future videos, feel free to comment them in the comment section down below. Thank you and I hope to see you in the next video again.